Welcome to part four of Branch Line, my beginner's journey into a model railway layout. And in part three, um, which is kind of the first half of this section, I talked a bit about thinking about the design of the layout and how it would work for me and what I wanted it to do and how I went about planning the track. My ideas changed very quickly. I actually bought the track, all of the track that I wanted to use for the Hornby track plans, track mat extension. And so I had all this track, maybe, I don't know, as I said earlier, five or 600 euros worth of, of Hornby set track, as it's called. And then I went on to a forum RM Web. Some of the guys on there were really helpful in designing a layout for me using more or less all of the track that I bought. And this is the track plan from Chris on the RM Web forum. So things I've learned about that, take your time when you're putting the track together, make sure all the pieces fit together points have to be placed together in a certain way that particularly with two sets of points together you can't just push one in to a piece of track and the point into the other they have to kind of go half in together and push them in at the same time it's you know it's things that you learn as you're doing it then all the track has to be pinned down um, i bought pico track pins and the pin hammer that was just wide enough to fit between the rails, which is another piece of kit I didn't possess previously. I have to confess that as a complete beginner, the Pico system was quite new to me, but one piece of equipment that they sell, very inexpensive, is the six foot weigh gauge, um, which is obviously not six foot, it's a, a couple of inches long piece of plastic and it allows you to put two pieces of rail side by side at the right distance for model locos to pass. So this is allowing for, in real life, about six feet, um, close to two meters distance between the tracks. One thing I decided to do, um, again with help from the guys on the forum, is to build an ingle nook sidings puzzle. It's got slightly different names sometimes. Ingle nook shunting puzzle, you might have heard it called, or ingle nook sidings. And it's basically three sidings of certain lengths. And they're used with a certain number of wagons and one loco. And the idea is to shunt the wagons into a specified order which is selected at random using maybe, I think originally it was using uh, tiddlywinks or you could use, you know, uh, pieces of paper with numbers on. But that's something I found of interest because what I wanted to do was not just have a track that was going round and round. I think I could get bored with that quite easily. So it's actually got a permanent ingle nook sidings shunting puzzle built into it. I'm showing you here, it's, I haven't got enough wagons really to demonstrate it properly, but I'm showing you here set up with a couple of other pieces um, to pretend that they're wagons. And so hopefully that will be something that will give me something a bit extra to do. And I just, again, asked the guys how I would extend the, the bottom siding. So that's a quick overview of the layout, what I've done so far. Comments, suggestions, help is always very welcome. And once again, thank you so much for all the kind comments I've had since I started this. 
I know it can be a bit rambling sometimes, but I hope you're getting something from me sharing my journey, if you like, into building this model railway and the things I've discovered already, the learning I've had, which is really something that um, I find very helpful for me. I like being on learning curves. So um, I hope you're enjoying it as well. And I'll see you in part five.